cargo containers are readily available around the Seattle waterfront, so architects Robert Humble and Joel Egan turned their attention to cargo texture. In the shadow of Mount Rainier, outside of Seattle, Washington. Welcome to Studio 320. Let's take a look. All right. Their weekend retreat is off the grid, meaning it produces its own power and collects its own water. The shipping container came to be here through uh, some investigations Joel and I had been doing for some time with sustainable and modular housing, and the shipping container was a ready vessel. We've installed cargo containers here as sort of a learning lab for us to understand how to live off the grid uh, and how to live sustainably and how to have uh, essentially a retreat environment which is durable. The two containers line up to give the living room more depth. What we've done is we've taken two eight-foot wide containers and we've chopped out their long walls and joined them together in a way that we've then created a room that's roughly 12 feet by 14 feet. We've basically taken the containers and we've shifted them a little bit. And what that's done is it's created some additional spaces in the corners. We've got a small bedroom here in this corner and actually in the opposite corner over here we've created enough room for a small bathroom and a small kitchenette. There's been some other things that we've done here that I think really make the space feel a little bit bigger. For one, we've pushed the glass right up into the corners of the ceiling and the walls. It allows the light just to wash right down the walls without dark corners. I think that once you start introducing these dark corners, it really starts to confine the space. Uh, in addition, this window's set deliberately down a little bit low, and what that does is it frames a really very unique perspective on this environment. The tops of the trees and the bottom of the trees are cut off, and it almost becomes uh, cinematographic. One container extends past the living room to create a bedroom. In this end, we've got the opportunity to create not a bedroom, but a bed nook. If you think about it, nobody really spends more than a couple waking hours in their bedroom. So we think that a bed nook serves the purposes just fine, and it gives a lot more space back to the real living great room. The end of the second container fits both the bathroom and kitchenette. Uh, one of the most interesting aspects of the project is that all the plywood finishes on the interior here are actually recycled themselves. These uh, plywood walls actually used to be on the back of some bleachers in an old Catholic high school here in town. I could say, boy, if these walls could talk, huh? I think also the, the uh, countertops here are made from 100% post-consumer waste. And even this backsplash here served a previous life as Joel's kitchen countertop. We've had quite a few drinks over that. Moving into the bathroom here, here we are with Joel's kitchen table again, serving as the backsplash actually uh, in the bathroom. Now this is another great thing because we're kind of doing some double duty and we're uh, getting some light shared from the space adjacent. Our design inspiration for this bathroom was similar to that of say a Japanese bath in a small space, almost like a sauna or a spa. We have a floor that allows the water to drain entirely through. And instead of a shower pan where you walk into a shower and draw the curtain, essentially the entire bathroom is the shower. So we would like to say we don't consider it a small bathroom. We like to consider it a very large shower. The idea of their bathroom actually being a large shower is a very popular one right now. It's called a wet room, and it enables you to have a larger space instead of chopping it up. They've wood paneled the bathroom, which is really something I've never seen before. Way more inviting than tile. The roof collects Studio 320's water and power. So what we're doing with our, our laboratory here on the roof is we're experimenting with two different types of roof. We've got the green roof providing habitat, uh, birds come up here, uh, and it's also providing insulation and, and thermal mass for the thermal comfort inside. Um, in the back here, obviously uh, the concept is that we get power from the solar and the gravel allows us to collect, I guess, 160 square feet of, of water and fill up our rain barrels. The blue rain barrels on the side store enough water for flushing all of our toilets, our sinks, and our shower. You can shower with it. Of course, you drink out of your own bottle if you want. And the best part of putting all this together and being off the grid is there's no utility bills. They've created a self-sustained, recycled mobile unit. It seems like they could help a lot of disaster victims, people in need. Their imagination and creativity, I think, could help a lot of people. Probably in less than two hours' time, we can unbolt a container, bring it back on the truck, 
and haul it right out of here and put it back together again in any location of our choosing. We've used this as a, as a learning lab and as a prototype. I think we've really elevated a very utilitarian box into a really nice habitable structure. 